Okay, so we carry on with crypt setup. Now I've got all the dependencies for it installed. Download the tarball. And we've got some kernel settings to check, so I better do them because um, as you saw last time, it could affect tests, which is what I thought. I just didn't think it would affect the tests as much as I did. So I'm going to make these changes in the kernel. All right, so we want to go to device drivers, multiple devices, driver support, device mapper, which is checked, and crypt target support. So that's already set. Next to cryptographic API, block ciphers. We want to enable AES. Encryption standard, so that's that one. We can just check the symbol name, Crypto AES. Then for tests, we've got two fish, just down there. And go back, length preserving ciphers and modes, XTS. Hashes digests and max. To ensure that SHA 224 and 256 are set, they're already set by something else. And user space interface, symmetric key, cipher algorithms. So it's that one there. So once again, we rebuild the kernel. And run the install script and if you remember I created this little script just to automate the mounting of the boot drive boot, part boot mount partition doesn't even check if it's mounted so if it is it will fail immediately there copy the kernel image the system map file the config and install the modules and then finally unmount the boot so I shall run that you'll notice that's version 16 of the kernel so when we now go into reboot we should check that that has indeed updated to number 16 so the PC is now restarting There's the grub menu. It's booting and I've got the prompt up so I um, can log in again now. So you name minus A and you can see it's got number 16 there. So back to BLFS, I think I downloaded this didn't I? Uh, crypt. Yep, there it is. So simple configuration and build. Um, in fact, it does say here that some tests will fail when we run the test if the uh, appropriate kernel configs aren't set. So uh, it looks like it goes through all of them again that we've just set. So I'm hoping there aren't any errors uh, with these tests, certainly not to I would just say to run as root, and it's complaining that I've not run as root, so let's abandon that if I can break into it. No, it looks like it's not going to let me. Um, what I'll try and do is... 
have to try and kill the job that started. Uh, oh, has it stopped now? Yes, it has. Okay, got there in the end. So let's rerun these as the root, and that's better.
Okay, so that has finished. We've got one of 11 tests that failed. Um, there's no information about any test that might fail. Uh, it's just this tcrypt compatibility test, which um, doesn't really give us much information. Um, so I guess there's nothing really I can do apart from um, carry on. There's nothing here that looks like tcrypt, like a shortening of something else. Um, oh yes, that's one thing I did notice, we probably should have passed this, because Lipid SSH it was not installed, so it could, that could be the reason. Um, I guess I really should possibly rebuild it with that switch in case that causes problems. Let's see what the configure came up with. It might have detected that that wasn't there. Um, well, so there's no status output on the configure. See anything obvious looking for SSH just by scanning this? Uh, let's have a look at the config.log. Search for SSH. Oh, right, okay, it was uh, already added. Okay, so that's not the problem. I thought it was something optional that I've missed off. So, I don't, yeah, like I said, I don't really know why, why that's failed. Um, there's no information about running an individual test, how to do that, so I'm not going to run the test again in case it's a parallel problem. Uh, you know, executing things in parallel. Tcrypt compact. I can't even see it printed up here anywhere. Oh, there it is there, is that it there? CBC AES. So whether that's something else that needs to be set in the config, possibly. Um, I'll have a quick look. No, I, I don't know where that would be, so... That possibly should be turned off, because as far as I know, I haven't got any crypto devices, so it's probably not useful to have that built in. But I'll leave it as it is. Um, some of these may be advantageous to turn on if you know that the CPU supports uh, hardware uh, crypto functions. I'm not sure if that's put on LS CPU or not. Uh, so AES is there. Possibly something like that being set, but as I'm not sure. Oh, AES new NI. 
says there. Uh, so if we've got that, I think that's what that means actually. So it is possible that we could probably set that. Um, it'll certainly speed up things, but because uh, I'm unsure, I'm not going to do that now. Um, like I say, I'm not really sure why that test is failing. That's something you'd have to look into a bit closer. So for the time being, as I say, this this sort of area of things like encryption of disks and so on is not something I would normally use. Uh, certainly not in Linux from scratch. Um, I might use something that's pre-built because as I, say, I don't know uh, anything really about it. Uh, I just have to use something that's pre-built. Um, and so therefore I'll just go ahead and install this. The rest of the tests are okay. It's just that one particular one. Uh, in fact, it's one one of the set, no, it's not actually, although it only te says one, uh, 11 tests were run, there's lots of individual parts to each of those tests and it, is, well, it was just one particular one. Oh, it says they're required KDF and Cypher's test. So it could be there's something else in the kernel or possibly um, these. Well, possibly that, I don't know. So, uh, I'm not concerned that that would cause us a problem. Um, as of course, if we find out that it does, then obviously it would be. So, let's install that and tidy up. So, that was crypt set up. We can go back to lib block dev. We now need key utils. Right, Mick Kerberos is required of this. Okay, and key utils is probably re recommended. Okay, so we'll have to build Mick Kerberos then. Optional bind. Right, I'm not, I will install a time server um, but because I'm only installing Kerberos to, as a dependency it's not something I'm going to be running I'm not going to bother setting this up too much I'm not going to bother with bind utilities I'll just copy that and install as little of this as I need to Um, I think if you're dealing something like this, you'd, you'd be doing it because you know the stuff, you know how to set it up properly and so on. So let's start building it. Copy the configure. Let's just check the options we've got here. Let's take the this is an SS. So we have got LDAP, so we could possibly put that in. Uh, let's see what those configuration commands do. Now let's build the package. Okay, run some tests. It says some tests are known to fail for various reasons, so don't expect this to go smoothly.
Okay, so those tests have finished. Look, look, there wasn't any failures. Um, there's certainly a few skipped, but no failures, so that's good. So now it's time to install the package. So I'll create this Kerberos config in case it's needed, but um, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not going to be running any daemons. This is purely for anything that wants to use Kerberos. Um, default realm. Uh, let's put my net.org, which is my domain that I use. So my net.org. I guess that would be something like LFS. Uh, I can't remember the name of this machine now. LFS 12 in capitals. LFS 12.mynet.org. That would be the same again. So I think that should looks like I've got to put it in here as well. We need to substitute domain proper host name comes to Belgarath and example to I'm not sure why that's in lowercase there. That one. Default name should be as your domain change to all caps. All right, okay. That's why it's in uppercase. Mynet.org. And this one here as well. equals true so I'll save that create the database you should Now populate database with principles users. For now, just use your regular login name or root. Right, okay, so I'll put a password in. Okay, you should now... So is this the tool you run, I think, came okay, in local? Yeah. Add policy dict only. Add print. So I need to put. You should now populate the database with principles users. For now, just use your regular login name or root. Um, I suppose I'll do both of them. Okay, so I can't use the same password. Okay, so I'm going to do that again for root. Okay, so that's Work the KD server and machine running covers must have a host key installed. So that needs to be LFS twelve dot mynet dot org. Oh, 
because I've copied the prompt. That's been created. After choosing defaults when prompted, you have to export the data to a key tab file. been prompted for anything. So if I quit and look for this KRB five dot key tab. This file should have access of 600, which it has. Uh, root RW only permissions. Exit K admin. So I think this is testing this now. So we start it. Get the ticket. Is that with the current login name, do you think? Let's try kernel text. No, so this bit's not working. Cannot find KDC for reminder the org while getting initial credentials. See if that's running. So that is running. Uh, let's try this as an ordinary user. Okay, in it. Right, so there's probably something wrong with the config file. So I'll kill this. Edit this again, let's just double check this. So the realm's got to be the domain in capitals, encrypt true realms. Ah, oh, right, okay. There it is, I missed this one. So I'll copy there. Let's check the rest of it while we're here. KDC is the full qualified domain name admin servers the same <clears throat> so example the organ our case equals example the organ uppercase and that's all there is so let's now try rerunning this program here and then k init root Oh, it still doesn't like it. Um, the only thing I can think of is that running these examples on that config file that was um, incorrect may have mess things up so let me do all that again um so here's my say grep uh krb kill 21269 so that has gone so i'm going to see if this command will recreate the database my net.org so it does seem to be doing it as a complaint that it exists or anything enter the k 
KDC database master key. Okay, so it looks like I can't. Remove those. Let's try that. Might be uh, doing things here that shouldn't be done, but I'll try it. Let's remove all of them. Rerun this create command. Put in the password. Right, that has worked. Let's look at that. Okay, so it has recreated them. Okay, that's why it didn't work. So now we go back into K admin local. Run this command and then add the users. So I'll do root first. Okay, so it's remembered that I've used the previous. Is it, or was that the message that came up before? No, it's remembered it from last time, so I probably need to do this again. Um, so that's done. So, uh, mismatch, okay. Let's try it again. Still reckons it's in there. That's not right because I've just created a brand new one. Oh, I see the password is in the password dictionary. Okay, so it's actually checking it against the dictionary we set up with um, uh, Cracklib, probably because it does get mentioned at the top here about adding a word dictionary. Uh, yeah, word dictionary. So I've got to think of something that I will remember, but that is different enough. Um, to be accepted. Um, let's try that. Right, that's worked. So now let's try the one for kernel text. Okay, so that's worked. And now we Add this. I don't know what the prink is. Principle, principality. I don't know what that is. Um, so this has got to be lfs twelve dot my net dot org. No policy specified. Defaulted to no policy. So that's been created. And then this Katie add and then add that name again. So that's worked. So now use quit or exit. I'll just check this KRB five dot key tab file again. Yes, that's got 600. Run the daemon. And we'll try once again. No, it's still not working. So I'm not sure why why this isn't working. Um, no credentials cache found. Let's try running this command, see what happens with that. So that looks like that's working. Put 
put that in. Okay, so um, as I say, I'm not going to do the startup, especially as it's not working properly. I just hope that there's enough there that will um, be usable by anything that wants to use MIT Kerberos. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, as I say, I don't really know much about this package at all. Um, so maybe that's something I need to learn about. Uh, fill in the gap in my knowledge there. So uh, let's carry on with key utils. Um, so we've got this dependency in, so this should build OK. Um, OK, that our lib is for the installation, so we just run this set and make, run the tests. Uh, oh, there's the root user again, sudo minus e. PCTL command not found. And it does say several tests will fail if uncommon kernel options not used when the kernel is built. Um, but the fact that it's not finding this key CTL is slightly worrying. Um, was that part of no it's not part of Kerberos um, I think what I might do though is modify the kernel to include those options Um, see if that improves things somewhat. So, let's search for these. So, the first one's called big underscore keys. There it is, it's not set, so we'll just go into that. Oh, it looks like we might have to enable something else. Enable access, key retention support. Oh, that's already set. And then it's called large payload keys. Right, I can't see that, so. Do we need to set something else? Yes, we need to also set crypto lib cha cha 20 poly 10305. So let's look for that one. Let's enable that. Now look once again for big keys. So that cha cha is now set. And you can see this one which jumps to where the option is has moved down to the actual option itself that we want to set. And there it is. Um, key DH operations. It's not that one there, is it? Key DH operations, yes it is. So we'll set that one. And crypto DH. Crypto underscore DH. Oh, so that's already set the looks of it. Let's jump to that one. Yes, it is. And there is a symbol again. Okay, so let's exit all of that. Rebuild. And 
and reinstall. Now I can't imagine that these options have an effect on that apparently missing binary. Um, but we'll see. So reboot and log out. Right, so the machine's just reset. And this is the only dependencies as well. Right, so let's see about getting in there again. Right, I've jumped in. I'm not watching the screen this time. There it is. So let's extract it again. Key utils, CD key, key utils. I'll run this set in first, Let's see if that's okay. That seemed to work all right. Run make. Yeah, that's really quick, isn't it? And then as the root user, run make test. No, so we're not getting the complaints. Um, about the, I can't remember what the errors were, oh no, I can't see it now, I've rebooted. Um, yeah, we're getting this RPM, but then that might be the Red Hat Package Manager, I presume, I don't know, so it doesn't seem to affect it because it carries on. It seems to be this key CTL command not found. And as I say, the only dependency is Mick Kerberos. We installed everything from that. If I hang on, this needs key utils itself, doesn't it? Well, that's interesting. But it is optional. Well, I don't know what to do with this. Um, I'll try and install this, but I imagine it's going to fail. Uh, so do minus E. Well, it has worked, which is surprising. Let's again try to look for RPM. Doesn't look like it's in. Oh, there it is. There, CTL. So it looks like it should be run after it's installed because it's actually put that key CTL command in as part of the installation. So it looks like this page needs to be re edited to say that it's got to be installed first. So I imagine if I run this now as a root, it will actually run. Yeah, it has run, but it's. um come up some different errors now. Can't determine endianness. Well, it looks like maybe this needs some work in the book to resolve the installation. This, it looks like, well, this is a dark corner for me, all this uh, crypto stuff. And it looks like it may be a dark corner for some people at the, uh, on the BLFS ed ed editors. Um, Although having said that, Kerberos is not running, is it? So that could be the problem. Uh, let's run that command. We'll just run the daemon directly. Let's see if that makes any difference. No, it doesn't. So I'm going to leave that like that. So this is not 
something I'm really OK with. Um, maybe I'm just wondering if I should have avoided this part of the build. So I'll tidy this up. It is installed, it's just the tests are a bit iffy for whatever reason. It could be that this is completely broken as it stands. So despite the fact that it's installed, it's not going to work. Um, so let's go to lib byte size next. Uh, we've got PCR2 and pigment 6. I'm not sure about that. We might have. Yes, we have. And GTK doc we've got. So let's deal with this one. I guess the thing is, if anything runs that needs the crypto, or if we run anything that needs it, it's probably going to fail. Uh, so this is straightforward. So I presume the tests will probably check some crypto stuff, means it's a dependency and therefore we'll have a failure. Yeah, there's one there. Canary tests. Um, oh no, this is not. All oh right, this is a sibling of that other package. It's probably this one here that's got the. Yeah, sorry, it's not this, this one that needs a dependencies. Um, right, okay, so that's failed because we haven't got these uh, optional Python tools, so that's a bit pointless running that. So let's install. So that should be okay, that package, if anything else needs it. Um, yeah, it's probably going to be this lib block dev that might fail in various ways. So lib NVMe. Yeah, we've got all the dependencies for that. So this is a simple copy and paste. Run some tests. So two expected fails. Everything else passed, that's fine. Let's install the package and that's done. So back to libblock dev. So optional, um, BTRFS, probably going to install that anyway, because I'm probably going to install GParted, which this uses if you've got BTRFS file systems. Um, GParted uses Parted. So I'm not sure what that does. But let's install this. So we've got LZO and all of these. So let's in and we've got some kernel for configuration here to allow it to work so let's do that next So let's go to file systems, BTRFS file system support, which is all the way down here somewhere. There it is there. I was on it. Um, as before, I'll just set similar options to the EXT. So it's got POSIX and extended attributes on all of them. So POSIX. Uh, 
Nein, das ist uns halt ja nicht kommen. Option. Uh, file systems. So we should have these already set. Uh, Reset FS with extended attributes and POSIX access control lists. And oh, it actually says here to set the POSIX for uh, ACLs for BTRFS anyway in the second box down here. So that's all okay. Let's save that, rebuild. So that's number 18 now, let's reinstall this and reboot. See if that's come up. Yeah, there it is. So CD sources BLFS. So it actually says there's some tests require grep built with Perl regular expressions to obtain this rebuild grep with the LFS chapter eight instructions after installing PCRE2. So that's interesting. So um, I think what I shall do is get up a new tab, change this to just LFS. It should take us to the LFS book. No, it has, oh, because I'm on the local. Right, okay. So let's go to LFS 12.0. And some scratch. LFS, read online, stable. And we'll go to chapter eight and look for grep, which is there. And I thought I saw it. It'd been easier to search for it, really. There it is. So there's nothing specific here. So I imagine the configure automatically picks up um, grep. So what I'm going to do is just copy the grep tab all here. It shows that we've actually installed grep again. Extract it, change into it. I'm just going to add this into my uh, list as well. So I'll put rebuilt after PCRE2 for BTRFS progs tests. So we'll put these commands in one at a time, especially this one. Just want to see what the output is, if it puts a status up of what it's found. Yeah, there it is there. It's checking for PCRE and it's found it. So it has automatically done it. So let's rebuild it. Run the tests. OK, 
Okay, so that's all work. There's no errors. So let's install that. And that's done. So we've got a grep that's been built with the PCRE2 Perl regular expressions library as specified. So we can now build PTRFS progs. So let's copy configuration, see if we need to add anything to this. Right, so we've got Sphinx installed, so we can, in theory, remove this to allow the main pages to be rebuilt. Uh, let's see what this says here. So there's no static libraries, the doc generator is Sphinx, and everything else is being built by the looks of it. So let's now do the compile. And for running the test build a support program. And as the root user, run the tests with all these commands. So if the kernel options mentioned above are not enabled, some tests may fail and prevent all the remaining tests from running because the test disk image is not cleanly unmounted. So we should be okay.
Okay, so it looks like um, that it does say some fails. It doesn't report anything at the end. I have to look at each category for the looks of it. So at the end of the file system check, there was nothing reported. One wasn't run for some reason. On the MK of making a file system command line interface, it said, "Oh, this might be the beginning of this conv part." The release file system is not listed. And it might be because it was set as a module, possibly, so it hadn't been loaded at that point. But there's no. Okay, so it didn't actually test it. So that's a bit strange. Um, we've got one unexpected success. And then test failed for delete during send. So it's just one failure there. Um, so whether that is down to kernel or something else, I don't know. I don't know why it couldn't delete the sub volume delete during send. But by path succeeded, so a bit peculiar. Uh, so I'll install that based on that, just that single failure. That's fine. Uh, I'm already root, yes, I am. So Sphinx ran, the documentation is built, and certainly man pages are installed. Yeah, so we don't need to run this as it says. Um, so this version of BTRFS progs does not convert correctly or does not convert EXT file systems correctly to BTRFS if the orphan file feature. There's quite a few grammatical mistakes as, as an English native English speaker in this manual so um, perhaps I need to get somebody who can uh, deal with these uh, grammatical uh, mistakes. Um, that's a bit of a, it, well, it may be correct, but it sounds extremely peculiar to state it this way. Um, so it does not convert ext4 file systems correctly if the ext4 orphan file feature is turned on. So if you happen to convert a file system, you need to run that uh, command there on the device to do that properly. So let's tidy up. Okay, so there is something still mounted, which hasn't been unmounted. It sounds like it might be what the error was to do with. It does say it's actually been deleted. So let's try and unmount it. Is that because I've deleted the directory maybe? Looks like it has gone. All oh, right, okay, that's done it. So let's try and remove that again. That's works now, so that's okay. So that's BTRFS progs. So back to lib block, we need to install Parted next. And this needs DOSFS tools. So once again, we need to go to the kernel. Back to file systems. 
and enable the DOS FAT XFAT NT file system. So MS DOS is already set, VFAT is already set. One thing, oh no, that's already set. The XFAT I found is becoming more popular. Um, so I tend to always install that now. I don't, didn't use to, but it seems to be more and more popular now for larger storage devices uh, where the VFAT won't, won't do. So there's no changes there, which is handy. It means we don't have to rebuild the kernel yet again. So let's configure. And it looks like we can copy them. Oh, we need to fetch the package actually. So extract it. And let's select this again. Run some checks. And that's all good. Let's install it and tidy up. So that was DOSFS tools. Let's put that in the list. Back to Parted. So this just needs to be installed and reinstalled after text live for documentation. Okay, so I'll fetch this package. Extract. And right, 20% more tests can be run if the following kernel module is built. Okay, so back to the kernel again. Device drivers, SCSI device support, SCSI low level drivers, which you need to check, and SCSI debugging host and device simulator. Imagine it's going to be near the bottom, maybe not. SCSI debugging host. Oh, there it is. Okay, it's hidden away. Um, looks like it says to install it as a module, which makes sense because it's only going to be used when it's uh, when these tests are running. Probably nothing else. So that's okay. Save that. Rebuild. Install and reboot. Okay, so let's try accessing again. Let's source is BLFS. And I think we downloaded this, did we? Yep, and we've extracted it. So change into it. Let's have a look at any commands. 
So disable device mode for didn't install LVM2. So we have got that. So we won't install it. We can copy and paste all of this. and run some tests. Well, it does say many tests are skipped if not run as the root user, and there are a lot being skipped. So um, how long does this expect to take? Oh, it's finished, right. I'll rerun them as the root. Uh, so we had 32 skips there in total, 97. Test 65 passed, so let's get more testing done now. Okay, we had three failures there um, and 13 errors. I'm not sure why it seems for some reason the partitions are unable to be mounted. Um, I'm not sure if it's anything to do with that SCSI module. Um, let's try and insert that. Sure, what it would be called. Let's have a look. So, kernel uh, drivers SCSI SCSI debug. Okay, so in let's do mod probe mod probe SCSI underscore debug. So ls mod. So that's installed now. Let's try and run the tests again. See if that makes any difference. Right, there's still the errors, but we haven't. Got, oh, there's one failure there. Oh, it looks like it's trying to remove the module. Um, I wonder if it should become, rather than an effective route, become the route. Uh, well, yeah, that did reduce the failures. Right, so it has removed that module. So it was, maybe it was uh, trying to insert it, not working. Um, so let's do SU minus E sudo minus the SU and try and run the tests like this. So make check. I'm getting different errors now, so a bit strange how this is happening. Or different failures rather. So that module is still failing. Yeah, okay, so what I'm going to do now is to log out and log in as the root in case the tests are aware of the fact that it's just an effective user root, um, BNFS, and we're in parted. So this now it's still yeah it's still failing. 
Yeah, I'm not sure why it can't remove the, that module at, the, at this point in the test. It does remove it at the end because it's not there, um, even when I installed it manually. Yeah, so I can't seem to get any better than that, and I don't know what the errors are about. Um, so I think there's nothing to do anymore with that. Um, so I'll install it. Do minus ESU. And we didn't build the optional documentation because we couldn't. Let's run parted. Yeah, it is working. Yeah, I guess there may be some possibly some parts that won't work. Um, so if that's something you're going to use in anger, that might be a concern to ensure or find out why that isn't working. Uh, so crypt setup is something we've done. All these are installed. So we can install this package next. Uh, let's tidy this up. It does say that it extracts to a different directory. So it's volume key, volume key again. So this tells the system or the build system how to access those two packages. Um, so we'll leave it without Python in because that stops it from using Python 2. Okay, let's run the tests. So that's all passed. And we can install it. And clear up. So now we're in a position to build lib block dev. Let's fetch it. So configure, examine the options. So we can remove the without key scroll because we've installed volume key. Without LVM, LVM Dbus without tools. So we can remove them because we've got parted LVM, LVM Dbus, and without tools, we can re remove that without BTRFS, without MD Road, without tools. So 
So without MD or break, you just so don't use it unless you know we know what you're doing. Okay. So we haven't got that. So without crypto. Without crypto so double keys, that's what we use. Okay, so we won't use that. And without DML, VML, v device and pass. Okay, again, we don't need them. Without NVMe, switch allows building the block diff without MV. We've got that as well. So we'll remove that one. And we've got GTK docs. That's not mentioned there. So I'll remove that as well. So in basically in the end, we're just left with that. So lib block we found council following lib nd ctl is that one of the yes it is so did that get mentioned no it doesn't So let's try adding without in lib ndctl. No, okay. So I can't see anything about that there. Uh, Grep. Uh, what is it called? NDCTL. NDCTL. So there's no mention of it in the help. Um, um, oh, I just think I've noticed a mistake I've made. Um, yeah, this should be, right, that's NVDIM, not NVME, so I've removed an option that's the option that is required or, or that needs that ND uh, CTL, so I won't bother with that, that's probably, let's try it actually. Yeah, that's allowed it to work. That's that's a mistake I've made there. Uh, right, okay, so this should hopefully build now. Um, crypto plugin escrow, escrow support. Oh, without. Oh, yes, I should have recalled the uh, command rather than putting this in again. So that's what it should look like. Yeah, let's reconfigure that. So that's better. Okay. So now let's build. Okay, and install it there's no test because a dependency for the test is not part of blfs okay that's lib block dev back to u disks um, so that's that we've done that one in fact i should check that to be doubly short libg uh, libg udev yep and it's been rebuilt uh, 
This will take Polkit, Login D, Contrib Introspection. So just GPT F disk now. There's the remaining dependency for U disks. So let's put that one in. So this is another partitioning, this partitioning bit of software like um, F disk and Parthead. It's handy to have them all around because they've each got individual features that um, others don't have or are harder to use. Um, although I generally use F disk, it's just generally easier. Um, okay, so that's the tarball and a patch. We've got popped an ICU. So let's extract GPT F disk. So there's no options, we'll just copy and paste this in. Starts with the patch. Run some tests. Okay, that looks like that's all successful. And now build, uh, sorry, install GPT F disk, and that's done. So onto U disks. Got everything installed for this. Copy the link. So extract it, your disks. And what have we got? We don't want to rebuild the API, so we'll leave that off. Enable available modules. So yes, we do want that. So we'll just copy and paste this as it is. So make check, that's all okay, but looks at like there's some more, a more thorough test can we run, make CI. Oh, you must first create the directories file, run new disk two, and the optional Python module should be present. I take it that's what these are. Okay, that's not a Python module. Oh, right, for the integration test, I presume that's what this is, CI, so it should work then. So I'll have to make these directories. I'm not sure if that's as an ordinary user or not. Probably not, but we can try it. Oh, it has worked. Oh, probably because it's in var run, that's why. And var lib you disk to, that probably won't work. No. And let's now run this. Uh, let's time this, might take a little bit longer. Okay, yeah, it does seem to be a bit more detailed what it's doing, so I'll wait for that to finish.
Right, so that's produced an error running the extra tests, um, but it's just one error. So once again, I think, uh, unless this is something that's critical to you, I think given the standard test ran, this is probably um, more of a uh, exceptional case that's been found. Uh, no such final directory target CLI. Oh, is it another directory needs to be created? Maybe, I don't know. Uh, but I'm happy with that. That's adequate for me to carry on. So what I'm going to do first of all is just remove these directories. In fact, they might not be empty. We'll find out in a minute. Yeah, that one isn't. So that's the var run. Oh, is there going to be mounted fast systems again? No. So let's try removing those files. Okay, that looks like that's done. Yeah, it's not there anymore. Okay, so now I'll install U disks. And that's that one done. So G V F S. So let's have a look, dbus, glib, libsequence, I think that's been done. Yeah, that's okay. GCR we've done not too long ago. Oh, that's straight after libsecret, actually. Uh, GTK plus CIO, GDEB, soup. U disks, Vahi, Vahi, did we do the Vahi in the end? Yep, that needs a rebuild after QT. Blues, we've got Fuse, so no online accounts. And libg data, the looks of it. This needs rest. Lib add waiter. So we're ready to install that. That hasn't got any dependencies that we haven't got. So let's put that in. So there's no other options here. We'll just copy and paste. Uh, oh, GTK4 not found. Oh, right, it requires GTK4, and that's what we're trying to build. Um, right, I'll have to make a note to build this after GTK4. So build after GTK4. And that means that rest will need to be rebuilt after libadwaiter. 
rebuild. After if add waiter. So do you want to build a demo? Let's have a look. Okay, we could do that, I guess. So let's see what this looks like. So that needs GTK4 as well, okay. So we can build rest after GTK4 as well to get that. Rebuild after Libadwaita GTK source view. Build libadwaiter and also GT, GTK source view to get demos. Okay, so I can't do that now, so I'm going to build rest as it is. So let's put that, just move these around a bit. Okay, so let's fetch it. I'll tidy this up first. So GTK doc false. Okay, that's for the API documentation. Examples false, we can't build at the moment. And vAPI equals true, we can add in. So let's create the temporary build directory. Copy the meson setup command. And as in dvAPI equals true. Oh yes, I've only copied half of it. True, there you go. So that looks good. Soup 2 has not been found, and yet we've got that, I thought. And that says Soup 3. I'm sure we've got that lib soup. Lib soup. Got version 2. Version 3 needs to be rebuilt after sysprof, but apart from that, it should be there. So why isn't it finding it? Uh, once again, let's have a look at the meson options. See if it says anything for soup. There it is, soup two. So we have to explicitly set it. The looks of it. So maybe at one point it does say it's required, um, but maybe it's not required anymore then. So we need to set that to true. So let's quit that. Minus D soup two equals true. Oh, we need to run reconfigure. Um, so has that got to go here, is it? Right, yes, that's found it now. So let's attempt to build that. That's okay. Run the tests. They've all passed. So let's run Ninja install and that's done. A note about that switch. Add minus D soup to equals true to 
to meson setup. Okay, so get rid of that. Now we need WebKit GTK. I think this is quite a big build, this one. Just got a few um, dependencies. So we've got uni def. Let's just check these. CMake GST plug Right, it requires GTK4, so we can't build this at the moment. So WebKit GTK will need to be installed. So rebuild after WebKit GTK dash two has been built, which is after which is after GTK four. So we can build this now, but it does say Web G WebKit GTK is a requirement as well. Um, right, so we're going to have to skip this one as well. This is getting complicated. So that's two that have got to be built after GTK4 now, so let's paste that there. So we can't do no online accounts yet, GVFS. So these are all optional anyway, okay. Let's have a look at the G data. That needs no online accounts, that's a requirement, so we can't build that. So we'll have to build GVFS and then rebuild after GTK4 and um, so rebuild after lib add waiter no online accounts and lib g data which will require gtk4 uh, at some point so that's that's making this quite messy now this rebuild because uh, there's lots of uh, dependencies to deal with um, at the moment we're only well, three packages behind looks like once gvfs is done we can build totem and then tracker so yeah it looks like we're nearly there anyway so let's get gvfs done um, for the first time, let's copy it, paste GVFS, so let's create the temporary build directory, copy the means and set up, let's see what options we're bound to have to modify. Option Okay, so I don't know which of these are part of BLFS. Um, well, I think NFS might be 
that looks like Samba, so that one could be removed because we've got Samba. G Photo might be. We've got Fuse. So I think I'll attempt to remove the ones I recognize and know that we've installed. Oops. Um, and leave the rest in for now. So, why am I doing this one at a time? Let's use that. So, I'll get rid of that. Um, I'll remove the, not sure what MTP is, I'll remove SMB. So, I'll make a note. And we've got CDDA, so we don't need to put that in. I'll make a note that configured with minus D um, fuse equals force and minus D SMB equals force removed. So I know for next time when I rebuild this. So SMB is in there. NFS false. Um, what was the other one? Fuse. Fuse is true. Okay, so that looks looks okay. Let's see about building it. Testing needs a dependency which is beyond the scope of BLFS. So let's install the package. That's okay. If you install the package to your system, to your system using Desto method, so we didn't. So that's GVFS done. remove that so now we can go to totem we've got everything we need for this totem PL parser So it didn't look like there's any other options, we'll just copy and paste. Run tests. Well, it says the test name passes is known to fail, so it looks like it's going to time out I imagine oh no it has, oh, it has actually run so I wonder if some of these failures are on maybe slower systems because that was given three minutes to time out and it only took 20 seconds so it could be on a very slow system it may fail so ninja install and that's that package done back to tracker now Again, we've got everything installed here. We've got UPower installed now. So we can copy this. Um, if you plan to run the test, some time it was too short when using spinning disks. Um, there are two plate alright, so not using spinning disks. So if you are, you might want to do this change to increase the timeout. So let's have a look at the options here. Let's build the temporary directory. These on setup. So dman equals false. So we've got ASCII docs, so we can build demand pages. Let's remove that line. So 
So we need that. So comp equals false. So we probably don't need that. We're not on either of those architectures. libgrss, I think we installed that. libgrss, where is it? There it is there. So we don't need to put that in. So I think that's all we need. Okay, that looks good. So let's build Ninja. Uh, let's just check these. All look good. Yeah, it looks like most things are enabled. So that's fine. Build it. Run the tests. Got one failure there. All right, there's two there. Our music brains. Is that I think that used to be a separate package. So that might be why that's failed, and it could be why this has failed as well, being that's an audio test. So not really too concerned about that. Um, connections to the bus can't be made. Okay, and it says that the test create files in the user directory. So yes, there they are. So I'll have to tidy that up. And now we'll install the package. And that's done. And finally, we get to GTK4, which is where a lot of this um, sideshow has been getting all of these packages installed. A lot of them are GNOME packages as well, so when we come to build GNOME, we'll probably find that a lot of work has been done. So that'd be quite handy. Uh, copy link address. Let's download this. Extract gtk-4 So make some changes from upstream, create the temporary directory to build in, copy the meson command, check the options. So Broadway backend, true, introspection enabled. So we can add that in because we've installed it, installed that option. Sysprof, we haven't got Sysprof enabled yet. Um, I can't remember what that needs now. No, there's several packages waiting for it, um, but I can't remember what the dependency is on that. Let's have a quick nosy. Oh, it's waiting for GTK4, so we'll have to rebuild GTK4 after sysprof, and then that will resolve a lot of other rebuild dependencies. So I'll put a note in, rebuild after sysprof, and enable sysprof with minus D sysprof equals enabled. Uh, tracker, we installed that, so we'll enable it. Color D is installed, I believe. I'll double check that. Yep, and that needs a rebuild as well. Uh, 
and man pages is true to build some man pages so I've got quite a few extras there uh, what have I done there I've put the space in the wrong place so it should be there okay so that all looks good debugging false that's good Vulcan we haven't got sysprof we haven't got so that looks as I'd expect. Okay, that's built successfully. I'm not going to build the API documentation. So we can run the test with this command here. Um, it looks like they might need to be running a X11 session. Yes, they're all failing. Well, most of them are failing. So once again, I'll get them up. Um, looks like they've run through quite quickly despite the number of tests so it shouldn't take too long to test so i'll log in start the gui up and change into sources blfs gtk dash four forward slash build and it's dbus run session meson test dash dash setup x11 so yeah it's, it's running now without failures and it's once it's got going it's running pretty quick it's done 500 six, 700 it's waiting for a window now to appear. Yeah, it's putting windows up on the screen. So I'm just having to click the mouse to let them go through. Right, it's slowed it down again now. It's on 987. There's another win in the end. A few more tests that pop up windows. So there's a couple of failures there, wherever I took a bit of time clicking to allow the windows to appear. So there's loads of windows appearing all at the same time at the moment at around test 1278. So I'm just madly clicking on the mouse button to allow these windows to appear. As you know, on TWM you have to click before when a window is spawned you have to click to place the window on the desktop so i'm still madly clicking in case there's a timeout on the window not appearing or being allowed to spawn yeah i've had a timeout there i'm probably taking too long not clicking fast enough yeah, there's loads of windows Okay, getting there, 1412. So I think I'm going to rebuild GTK after we've got a different desktop up, or at least run the tests. Okay, that looks like it's finished. Yeah, they've got a couple of failures. Um, Oh, one calls headless input, so 
yeah, both of them to do with headless tests. So I imagine um, it's because it's not headless. Uh, it does say, oh, nine tests are known to fail if Cantrell fonts are not installed, or we have got them. Many tests fail if there's not an any for GTK4 and GTK modules line is not is not commented out. So I think the fact that I had just two tests is good. Um, based on that, I'm happy with that. So I'll install GTK4 now. And that looks like that's done. Configuration. And this configuration just for the user. So obviously don't run the X Windows as root. It's a security issue, I believe. So I'll put this in for my current user. Um, and I'll tidy up. Um, and I'll decide what to do next, I guess. Because um, this should be rebuilt soon, really. Yep, I'll have a, a think about that, I think. Right, I think what I might do is to try and resolve some of the um, well, I'll have a look at sysprof first because there's a few package packages are waiting for that. SAS requires GTK4. Um, I'll also resolve the packages for uh, libadwaiter and no online counts. So. Um, Yeah, GTK4 is a requirement for sysprof. And that needs libdazzle. Let's do libdazzle next. Requires GTK3. So let's do that one. Uh, copy link address. So this is a straightforward build. On some tests, we've got a failure. Okay, so there's six failures. It doesn't mention them. what they might be. Uh, oh, can I open display? Okay, so I need to do this on the screen. Okay, yeah, I forgot about the fact that GTK um, needs a screen the fact that the tests you won't be able to see that so that might be a reason to delay these uh, actually uh, hmm. let's see about doing this while we're here now so lib dazzle build ninja test Okay, they've all passed almost immediately. It took virtually no time at all to run. So that's okay. Uh, so I'll install this. And tidy up. Um, 
I'll install sysprof now. That needs lib adwaiter and that's waiting for GTK4. So I've got to do lib adwaiter next. So let's move that up. So lib adwaiter. Right, so this is just a build, it's not a rebuild. Um, so let's, there's no other options here, let's just build it. No API documentation needed. Right, again, these tests must be run from a graphical session. So I'll quickly change into these. Most, well, nearly all of these haven't got anything to see on the graphical session. They just must do something that is needed by the graphical session or use something rather. So Ninja test. There's 41 tests. All oh, right, a window's come up for this one, little windows. Yeah, the, the windows that are popping up and they're disappearing immediately. So not really anything to see. 41 out of 41 tests have passed. So that's good. Um, let's see what happens if I run Ninja test here. Uh, failures everywhere. Okay. So now install. And that's lib adwaiter done. Okay, now um, I've also noticed that REST and GVFS have got to be rebuilt after lib adwaiter. Yep, so I need to take those into account as well. Um, So let's get the GTK up. I think that was down to them. Rest and GVFS. Right, there must have been dependencies of these. So let's go to the home directory and look for, let's see what else this needs. Right, and they need more than just lib ad waiter. So let's look for rest. Oh yes, this needed GTK source for the demo. So let's have a look at the requirements for that again. Needs GTK4, PCR we've got, sysprof we haven't got yet. But that was about to be installed, so it could be that we should do sysprof first. We've just done lib adwaiter. Actually, I need to mark that off as being installed now. Libdazzle, unwind, yeah, I think we can install sysprof now. So let's do that next. Uh, have I got this here? 
バグ。Okay, so this looks like we'll just copy and paste this. Run some tests, they're all okay. And we can install it now. And that's done. So that's sysprof completed. Um, so now we should be able to do GTK source view, which needed sysprof. We've got everything else installed. Let's see if we haven't installed, I doubt if we've installed this uh, GTK. No, so let's do this one next. Don't want the API, but we've waited such a long time for sysprof. Let's use it. So we'll add that in there. dsysprof equals true. So no documentation, no tests. Uh, that's interesting. Is that because Valgrin hasn't been installed maybe? We'll find out. So let's run Ninja. Let's run the test, see what happens. No, there are a load of fails there. Um, oh, we'll fail to open display. So again, this may be a one where it's required to have the graphical display. So see the GTK sources for slash build ninja test. It's on, yeah, all 26 have passed. So let's now install. And tidy that up. So it's GTK source view. This now allows us to rebuild REST. And in REST, I had a note on adding minus D soup equals true to the setup. So let's make the temporary directory again. Copy the meson setup command. Take a look at the uh, notes. So don't want the API. So I'm going to add the examples now. So I'll set that to true. Uh, and DV the API to add in the VPII, uh, sorry, the Valor bindings and minus D soup to equals true as well. So that's all good, no documentation. And now I can do Ninja to build it. Oh, there's an error there. Rest auth error quark. GTK, so it's looking for something GTK4. It's interesting. I 
GTK4 is not a dependency. GTK widget. We've got all the dependencies. That's strange. Now it's obviously found GTK, I presume, whereas it wasn't there before. Let's see what it says here. Glib object lib soup JSON Glib lib XML. Glib compile. Well, that is strange. It seems to have failed with a GTK four error. Uh, I think, oh no, maybe not, no. Oh, it's a warning, I beg your pardon, it's only a warning, and it looks like it has completed, that's uh just seeing all those symbols and things and words just made me think it's uh, failed. So in theory, if I run this again, yeah, no work to do, it has completed. So now I'll run Ninja Test. I can't remember if this is one that should be run from the terminal, the GUI terminal. No, it doesn't. So I can reinstall this. And that's done. So that's REST rebuilt. I'll mark that as rebuilt now. So rebuilt. Uh, so that can go. And then we've got GVFS. Sorry, not on that one. On that one. Find GVFS and this says rebuild after lib add waiter gnome online accounts. So we need that one and lib G data, which all require GTK4 at some point. Okay, and a couple of configuration hints there as well. So let's do that next. Uh, so we've got to do GNOME Online Counts next. Oh yes, and this needed WebKit GTK. So we've got GCR, JSON, REST, VALA. So WebKit GTK next. This needed courage, GTK, GTK3, GTK4, GTK, soup, Tazen, LibWP, Mesa, OpenJPEG, Ruby, SQLite, Unif, Def is the next one we've got to install. So that looks like that's straightforward. So let's copy that one, copy that link address. So very simple, make, looks like that's all it's done, looks like maybe just one C file, C program to compile, that's all passed apparently, and now we can install. And that's done.
So back to WebKit, Unif Dev Witch, we've got WP Backend FDO, I'm sure we've got that. WPE. Yes, we've done that. Uh, bubble wrap we've done enchant geo clue right i think i'm not going to install that because of uh privacy issues um it's one of these ones to make uh well as it says tools location aware so it finds out i presume from your ip address who or what you are so there's probably privacy issues there so I don't personally enable things like that unless I know exactly what's going on. Um, object introspection, high color theme. So XDG Dbus proxy. XDG. No, we haven't done that one. So we'll install that. Okay, we've got glib, so let's put that in. Copy link address. XDG. Dbus proxy. So straightforward, copy and paste again. Ninja test. One test passed and install. So that's that one done. Uh, Woff. We've got Brockley and CMake, so we can install this one. Uh, again, there's no options, so we'll just copy and paste. There's no test suite, so once it's finished, we'll install it. And that's done. So now we should be able to build WebKit GTK. This package allows building with either GTK 3 or 4, but not both in the same build. The GTK 4 version is needed for packages such as Epiphany 44. Other packages as Balsa or Evolution require GTK3. Both versions can be installed side by side on the same system. We give instructions for both cases below, but the only difference is the setting of use GTK4. So it means that we've got to build this twice, once for each by the looks of it. So I presume that's what it means anyway. Um, Let's just have a, oops, let's have a quick search on the internet. Can GTK plus dash three and GTK plus dash four be on the same system? So there's no clues as to whether that can be done there. Uh, not immediately obvious. Anyway, let's try Google. Right, there it is there. Most definitely can have GTK 2 and 3 installed on the same machine. Oh, that's two and three, okay. Uh, 
Okay, um, stored, let's put together. Looks like maybe you can then, judging by this. Right, I think you can, but not in the same build. I presume that means in the same building, i.e. compiling of the um, session. So we'll have to do these instructions first, and then up to there, and then do it again for GTK4. So let's see how we get on with this. Uh, so let's do GTK WebKit and I'll add in after this that it is for GTK um, plus version 3. So let's copy the link address. And as you can see, it takes quite a while to build, so it's a bit unfortunate we've got to build it twice. Um, but I don't know what I'm going to be building, or what we'll be needing either of the versions of WebKit GTK. Um, I think Balsam, and Balsa, I'm sure that gets built. Um, these are higher level packages, I'm not sure what they are, I think that's an email package, I'm not sure what Epiphany is, it might be a web package, a web browser, so I'll probably be having a go at those, so it does seem that we'll need both of them. So, webkit city webkit Okay, let's see how we get on. So make a temporary build directory and copy the CMake command. And let's see about editing these. Right, so enable documentation off. Um, it doesn't mention if it's API or not, so we can turn that on as we've got gr.gen. Um, we've got WAF2, but whether that's only for GTK4 or not, I don't know. Let's have a look to see what it says here. Gamepad off. This switch enable, disables gamepad support. Remove this right. We haven't got that. Mini browser that's being installed. Renderer. Uh, we've got that on. JPEG Excel off. We haven't got that optional external package installed, so we'll leave that. Enable bubble wrap sandbox on. We have these, so we don't need to change that. Enable journal D off. It's not available on System V, so that's okay. Use System Malloc on. So we'll leave that geolocation off. We'll turn that off. Um, right, it doesn't appear to be there. So I need to add that because I haven't installed GeoClue. So let's stick that in here. Uh, 
AVIFF and yep, WAF we can turn on. So let's just adjust that one as well. So let's see how that gets on. So back to the top. So there's a status there of what the build is going to do. So gamepad off, journal log off, quartz target off, stream web RTC off, GTK4 is off. That's good because we're using GTK3. That's not supported. We haven't got that. No, I'm not sure if that is or used to be an option. Don't know. And again, soup 2 has been turned off. I wonder why that's not being found. Let's try enabling that. Minus D soup two equals on. No, it's still uh, not used by the project. Okay. So I'll remove that, I'm not sure. What 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 the, that is about? Um, we'll just have to stay off. Okay, so I'll time this, and yeah, it looks like it's got quite a bit of work to do. Wait for this to complete now.
Okay, so that's finished building after half an hour. Um, there's no test, but it says we can run the bin mini browser as a quick test. Um, so I've just tried to load that and it says it can't find the shared library. So I need to, this is in the GUI by the way, uh, which obviously can't see at the moment. So I'm just going to do an LD config. and retry that and no it's still not working um, but I'd imagine it would only work once the installation's finished so I'm gonna do ninja install Okay, and uh, I'll just check to see if the documentation's installed. There's that mini browser, it's actually installed it on the system. Um, yes, there's GTK doc HTML, so the uh, documentation has been built and installed. So, as it says, if you uh, left the documentation off in the configure instructions then you'd need to run these commands to install um, the documentation so I'm going to try retry the mini browser and it has come up with a window on the GUI and yes it's come up with a gnome home page or the GPG the WebKit GTK home page so that looks like that works fine um, let's see what happens if I run it here browser yeah cannot open display and as I say it looks like it's installed it anyway into the system um, right that's not in the path so I'll have to put the full path in which is user libexec webkit gtk and again it's coming up with the same message so I'll try that path on the uh, GUI terminal, so it's user libexec webkit gtk mini browser. Yeah, it's come up exactly the same, so it has installed the same binary. So that's all working for GTK3. It's installed, the documentation is installed. So what I'm going to do now is to Go back, remove the build directory, and oh, it looks like I could have done this command here actually. Never mind. So I'll make the build directory again, change into it. So it, this confirms then that we can build the both of them side by side. So once again, I'll copy the CMake command, go down to and just double check to see what's changed this time if there's anything different so WP render on that's okay that's not changed bubble racks on that's off um, system malloc this switch enables building against the system installed in malloc I can't actually see that was that not set before then it was I thought it would have been uh, okay uh, use system malloc yeah that's strange I would have thought they would have used that but maybe there's a reason not to uh, so I need to enable geolocation off disable it We've got AVIF and use WAF on. So I think that was all there was to add to this. They've got the GTK4 is on. 
So let's rerun the setup. Um, I presume there's no point in installing the documentation again, which is why the documentation off um, hasn't been well, in fact, there's no instructions for installing it. Um, actually, I'm not sure if it might install it in a different version, come to think of it. So I'm going to go back and actually change that to on. Um, I'll just go back to see if it has installed it somewhere else. Looks like it's actually installed into version 4, but it shouldn't cause a problem. It might mean that the build takes a, a minute or two more to, to build, maybe. So let's have another go at building. So the last one took 33 minutes. I would assume this one would take roughly the same.
Right, so that's built. It was slightly faster, but then it could be a case that libraries were already loaded into memory, so it's probably not worth reading too much into that. So let's now install WebKit for GTK4. And that's done. Again, there's another, right, this is called WebKit GTK6 by the looks of it this time. Yes, it is a different version of documentation, so I'm glad I did that again. Um, as I imagine, it's probably substantially different. So what I'm going to do now is to just test the mini browser on the GUI. And I have to switch to the new build directory because it will have a different inode as I deleted it. And I'll use the one that's been installed, libexec. WebKit, yes, the previous WebKit was version 4.1 and this WebKit is version 6, somewhat confusingly. Well, sorry, the previous version was called WebKit 2 GTK 4.1 and this WebKit is called WebKit 6.0. So there's a bit of a change in the naming convention there. So yes, once again, the browsers come up and it has connected to the webkit.org web page. In fact, I'm not sure if it's me, I'm not sure if the fonts look slightly different. They look certainly look better than the older version. So it shows us an improvement there, I guess, on the newer webkit. So that all works okay. So I've changed my spreadsheet so that it's got both versions that have been installed. So now I'll tidy that up. We can close that down, go back to GNOME Online Counts. Now I've got in my notes that this has already been installed. But if it has, I haven't got it that, that it's been installed. So I probably went to install it and it probably wasn't available to install because of WebKit GTK. So this is a rebuild. Uh, sorry, this is a fresh build. Um, rebuild after WebKit GTK, which has been built after GTK 4. So yes, that's what's happened. So we can install this now. So it's not actually a rebuild, it's just a build. So I'll change that. So in fact, I'll just delete the comment that I've put, put against it because it's a brand new build. No, it's definitely not there. So let's copy the URL. And we'll start with the build. We don't want um, API documentation. Um, well, as you saw, I've installed Kerberos, but I'm not sure if it's working correctly. So I'm not going to add that switch in. So I'll just copy and paste the options as they are. There's no test suite, so I'll install the package and that's done. So back to GVFS. So GTK dot lib archive lib G group lib G data is next. And we've got all the remaining packages installed as well. So lib soup version two no more online accounts GTK three Jason Junior Fano Lib O 
a u t h loop lib o auth okay looks like we can install this next oops i didn't copy again So let's fetch the package and the tarball, uh, the patch, sorry. So we can patches first we've got NSS so let's add that in as an option oh if you want to use Mozilla NSS instead of OpenSSL um, right I'll probably use the default as they've got in the book possibly safer um, so it doesn't mention NSS there just hash signatures using RSS to generate hash signatures signatures so that's why we haven't got the documents to build make a check um, all three tests passed get worried when I see lots of stars like it's going to be errors install and we didn't build any documentation. So that's that package. Oh, too far. So back to libg data, we need ut, uhttp mock, libsoup. Yep, got these dependencies. Let's put that in. Copy link address. UHTTP mock. So we don't want the API documentation. Let's build with the instructions as they are. check results so it looks like there's some tests that won't run there for some reason well we've got two passes but then the test summary says nothing happened <laughs> so I assume that's okay let's install and tidy up Back to libg data. Looks like we're okay to install this now. So let's paste that there. Fetch the package. And create a temporary directory. Copy the reasons set up. We want some documentation. So let's set this to true. OAuth enabled, we've just installed that. So let's put that in. Uh, ah, right, okay. Let's extract it first, might help. So make the build directory change into it, and now we can run the meson setup command. And that's better. Ninja to build. Oh, we should have removed an option there actually. So let's once more start again. Oh, 
we call the test the meson setup remove this option now we'll run ninja again that's finished let's run the test it says a few of them need network access and that's a pass so let's install Okay, that's done. Tidy up. And close that. So GVFS again. Um, right, what do I do just to add now? Oh, libg data, that's right, that's what we just did. Okay, so I think we can do GVFS now. Right, I have downloaded it. Let's see, I don't think it's been installed. Oh, it says rebuild after libadwaita, no online accounts, and libg data, which will require GTK4 at some point. Okay. And configure with defuse force and DSMB force removed. Okay, so let's extract this GVFS. So this is a rebuild. Make build. Copy and meson setup, and the notes say to configure with fuse removed. And SMB removed. I don't think there's anything else there we need to adjust. So let's run that in and build it. Okay, that's finished and just Marking this as rebuilt. And the fact that we're installing it now. Uh, so this is GVFS. So that's built. So it's time to install. There's no tests. Well, certainly not within the scope of BLFS. And that's GVFS built. Or rebuilt. Um, right, that's right. And I remember now these were rebuilds after GZK4. Uh, sorry, after Adwaiter, I believe. That's what it was for mainly. I'll just check I haven't got any others for GTK4 while we're at it. No, it doesn't look like it. Oh, there's one there actually. PY Gobject. So let's do that one next. PY. Uh, PY 
why, you know, that's why it didn't need to capitals, is it this? Oh, it's a Python module, so that's why I can't search for it here. So let's open it up here. PY object, or oh, which version is it? Version three, so it's that one. So let's copy that, put this back in here. Uh, duplicate. Okay, so yes, this needed GTK4 for the tests, right? So we'll extract. Is it a capital PY? No, where is it? Oh, it is all lowercase PY. Object 3. So remove a faulty test. And we'll just accept the defaults. Right, it does say that an already active graphical session is needed. And yes, it has failed. So I'll go on the GUI again. And rerun ninja test in py object 3 forward slash build so ninja test it's running now it's got default time out of 90 seconds Can see that running there at the moment. It doesn't appear to be doing much. Let's say it's got a timeout of ninety seconds, so oh I see why it's waiting for it's got a window to pop up. So Yep, now it's carried on and it's passed. Okay, so I didn't see that. It was a tiny little window, about a centimetre square. Okay, so now I can do ninja install. And that's done. That's rebuilt. So it's py object 3. Oh, GJS needs to be rebuilt after GTK 3, 4, and SysProf. I'm going to be re rebuilding GTK 3, so I'll leave that for now. And that does look like that's it for GTK 4.